Okay, um, I want to do a small little talk about change management. Um, I've worked at PricewaterhouseCoopers for eight years, and um, um, we had eight years of maturing the IT organization. Um, um, first, let me explain what a domino day is, for those who don't know. Um, it's an event where um, they, we had here in the Netherlands for a couple of times, where they tried to break the world record for tossing over domino stones. Um, in, um, in on a specific day and in the most spectacular way they could. So I have a small picture here and they have all kinds of buildings and they have lots of different parts where it's all domino stones. Um, how can you build? The question is how can you build such a thing? Um, you can only do that if you are really tight on what you change and when you change it. Um, that's, that's one part of it. So if you add a piece, how do you make sure the whole thing doesn't fall down? And the other part is, uh, on, the s on the day when you, when you start making, uh, trying for that world record, um, how do you make sure everything actually falls down? So um, my answer to that is good change management. Um, change management is also um, defined in, e in uh, ESO certification. Um, and here you see a little part of what they do. So there's all these people working on that domino day and they do small pieces. Um, and what happens if she tosses that piece around? They have to avoid um, actually that it starts running. That's one thing. And the other is, um, uh, so they have all these breaks in between, so if they, if it starts running, it doesn't take the whole thing down before the actual event is happening. And the other thing, smart thing they, they, they did is, um, on the day itself, it starts running, and one of those parts aren't working, they have a control line of domino stones. So um, if one piece stops, then the control line still goes on to make it um, um, toss the rest over. Um, a couple of uh, definitions for change management I've put here. Um, there's one thing, you need a proper balance uh, between the need for change and the potential detrimental impact of changes. Um, so you want speed on, on one side, so you want to, to, make, to be able to make changes really quickly, but on the other side you want to be sure that it doesn't break the whole house down. And another thing is, as soon as it does start falling, or one part falling before you want it, that it doesn't take it all down also. Um, also, you have to define um, what is your infrastructure. So it's not in a, in a, in a, when you have a large hall, a sports hall, where all these domino stones are, it's not just the stones. It's also what doors are open. It's also what windows are open. Because they had an incident where some windows were open and actually some birds flew in, you know, which could mess the whole thing up. And it's also, it should not be right besides uh, a train station or right besides a very busy road because the trucks will break it all down. So you have to define what's our, what, what is part of the infrastructure which is a part of the goal that you want to reach. Um, so what is a change? Um, so these are a couple of things that change management can do. You can have a, a change advisory board where people of, say, the building and the actual building team and the TV crew, because they want to have it, you know, they want it to be a spectacular event. So they come together and say, okay, we want to add this. And then the TV guy can say, well, that's not too interesting for us. Can you make it, you know, a little bit more spectacular? Um, and it also should uh, add some value to the organization. So 
I think we've heard it a lot in our Joomla project as well. Don't just change it for the sake of change. It should add something or uh, it should improve something. Um, so that's, that's that. So actually, if you haven't noticed, I'm not really talking about a domino day. I'm talking about the Joomla project. Um, and this is some things that could be added to the Joomla project, I think, which uh, a mature IT organization should have. For instance, the change advisory board. So where there's not just one team involved in any change that's being made to the Joomla project, but there's people from all over. Maybe not too many, maybe it's only four, or maybe it's only three, it depends on what kind of change it is. And um, so what can change management do? Um, decide what are really changes first, of course. Um, managing them. So yeah, that's basically it. I'm not gonna go through all the list. My question is, is the Joomla project ready for this best practice in IT management? Um, funny thing was I just gave that idea to, to, to Brian for you know doing this and I saw this tweet also and I agree with that because I think a lot of changes are being made and it's not always clear what's the impact on other parts of our Joomla ecosphere. Um, this was a really small introduction because I thought it's going to be really boring if I go too deep in it. Um, if you want to know more I gladly talk about it later. Um, most of the information I got now is from my own experience but also it's right there in the in the Wikipedia. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Who's next? Are you or beat? Uh, website. Okay. Okay, so um, I don't know how many people went to uh, Sander's session yesterday about the, the upcoming community um, contribution portal. Um, I wanted, to, I had a couple of ideas that I just wanted to put out there that maybe people might want to consider doing. Um, the first is I came across this website the other day. It's called ohours.org or um, Open Hours. And the idea and the concept of the website is that anybody can go and create an account on there and they can say I'm available on Monday 10 o'clock for one hour I mean I have skills in the following subjects and I'm happy to talk to you by Google Hangout by Skype by email by IRC um, about that so the idea for me in the Joomla world would be you're working on a project you're not really the best person about CSS you just want someone to be on hand just to give you some advice, to coach you through a few little things, um, to get you to that next stage. You know, it, it could be about anything. You see, you could come along, um, you put yourself down as, a, as you're willing to offer your advice and skills on CSS, and you're going to be around for an hour. And this website allows other people to come along, and then you can see who's available. Can I book a 10 minute slot with you? And you just click the button and that's reserved and then you can talk to them about CSS or JavaScript or PHP whatever it is so if you think of like the success of something like Google summer of code which is all about mentoring as well that's great but they're long-term big-scale projects this is just for like a five minute or ten minute advice session yeah and um, the other the other option um, instead of doing something like this uh, I was a little bit a little bit bigger um, and it's matchmaking um, if anybody, has anyone in the room done online dating? Okay, yeah, one person on the front row was brave enough to be honest. Okay. 
Your wife or somebody else's wife? Okay. So, so, the, so again, we could do a kind of an, uh, a matchmaking thing for the same principle. You can go, instead of it being a man looking for a woman or a woman looking for, it's I'm a person looking for a mentor. Yeah? And, that's, and I'm a mentor willing to offer my advice. So you can go on, you can create a profile, and instead of saying that you're six foot tall, you not, you've got a good sense of humor and that you don't smoke, you can go online and say, I'm a PHP expert, I'm a MySQL expert, I'm a Joomla expert, and I'm you know, happy to give one hour of my time or two hours of my time to somebody who's looking for some help on that side. So it's kind of like a short-term mentoring thing. And in the same way that you can offer yourself as a mentor, someone else can come along and query the database and find out what's available. So it's just like two ideas that if, you know, seem like they've got potential there, they're just like starting up ideas, but if anybody's interested in it, you know, either talk to me about it, we can maybe do some, you know, take that a little bit further, or just go for it yourself, or whatever. So I thought that was a couple of things I wanted to share very quickly. Um, the second thing is, because I'm cheating, you know, I get to do two lightning talks, is some of you may have heard um, that I'm going to be um, swimming. Um, Robert gave me the yeah, uh, armbands. Um, I'm not a very good swimmer, um, but um, after this, I'm going down to the pool, um, and I'm going to try and do uh, a kilometre, um, hopefully not sink. Um, I'm doing it for charity. Um, so far, yeah, oops, just off the screen. There we are. Um, I'm hoping to raise £2,000. I'm a little bit off that now. Um, I'm doing it for a hospital in London called Great Ormond Street Hospital. Um, it's a specialist children's hospital for um, extreme um, uh, kids who uh, need essential treatment. It's a research hospital. Um, it's also famous, if you know the Peter Pan story, um, the uh, copyright for Peter Pan uh, g goes to directly to that hospital. Um, and it's funded in a long way by that, but obviously they always need more funding. Um, so just after this, I'm going to go and uh, try and do a kilometre. I've probably, um, up until last week, I think the longest I'd sw furthest I'd swum in 20 years was about 25 metres. So um, to do a th to do a kilometre uh, was a is a big challenge. So if anybody is interested in supporting me on this, um, I would appreciate it. Um, you can uh, sponsor me online, or you can either through the Just Giving website um, or go to my blog. And the easiest URL probably is on my blog, which is slash web slash 800. OK, thank you very much. That's all I had to say. I just wanted to announce that the uh, PLT, uh, the group that's in charge of the code for Joomla, is going to be looking for new members. Um, last fall, I guess it was, last early winter, we brought on a number of new people all at once and we started getting the community involved in it. We want to um, change that a little bit because we still want the community involved, but we want to be able to bring one person on rather than a group at a time. So we're going to start having sort of standing nominations happening at developer.joomla.org. And um, there'll be a blog post about this coming out this week. But you can start thinking about that. If you know somebody in the community that's been um, contributing to Joomla and they have the time and, and the, uh, the, s the skills to do it and uh, able to get along with a lot of different kinds of people and the community, um, you could nominate them, and if you're such a person yourself, you're perfectly free to nominate yourself. Um, so that's about it. And also, just a quick remark that 9 o'clock tonight, just outside room number 2, we're having bug squashing. In front of number 2. Ale Alegria? 9 o'clock Okay, thanks very much. Bet. Bet. Uh, a short lightning talk about 
Joomla and how to bring back the wow. Joomla, wow, making the great, great really awesome. Um, about awesome, what is making it awesome? It's a brain, actually. And if we take a look, look at the brain, there are two parts in the brain. There's an intellectual part, and there is an emotional part. And this morning I was at a session where somebody asked, um, may I tell my feeling about that? And I think it's important to say yes, you should be able to tell not only tell your feeling, but also you should never be bashed for your feeling, telling your feeling. And uh, let's see how many of you are more intellectual and how many of you are more emotional. A small test. So please react to the next slide. If I tell the management doesn't know where they are leading us, and we might be going into a very, very bad direction. Okay. Now, next slide. Okay. So it looks like this single slide, which says the same thing than the text here <laughs> has made much more effect. And why does it make the effect? It's because that slide bypassed your intellectual part of your brain and went directly to your emotional part of the brain. So I think those em managing those emotions and letting those positive emotions and even negative emotions be expressed helps us. And what makes us run? Is it our intellectual part which makes us run or is it our emotional part? What does make a nice product that we love? A simple user interface, something that gives you some uh, emotions. And why don't we like a product? Why, why do we hate it? We hate it, for instance, because it's not open. Or we hate it because it's complex. So there are two things which seem to be uh, making the opposite effect. So on a product, it's, 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 it's features, specifications, config configurability of everything. Or is it the values it conveys, like being open source? The emotions it raises? Is it the beauty of complexity? Or the beauty of simplicity? And I believe that we need to add back that wow that we had over the years. We need to add back positive emotions into our community into our software, in the admin area, in the front end, in our website, and in our marketing. And those four, five areas, I think, are the key to success. We need to do some emotions management, and emotion management is a quite new field <laughs> in companies management, in corporate management, that is just coming out. And it's so simple that it's just unbelievable that it's not teached in elementary school. Rule number one, everyone has the right to have his own emotions. Rule number two, those emotions are true. You're not going to be able to argue against somebody's emotions. If you do that, you will just get somebody angry in front of you. You need to understand the emotions. You need to understand the causes of the emotion. And on those, you can handle and help to resolve those causes. And then suddenly, you're not going to get a little change, but you're going to get a huge change. Because the, the person will be 
able to express their emotion without being bashed at, will be able to express the causes of the emotion, and we are going to be able to uh, address those and to manage those emotions. That's for the community part. For the software part, uh, sometimes I have the feeling that the Joomla backend is a huge cockpit <laughs> where you don't always really see what's happening in the front end from the back end. And I think we could bring back some non technical, there's a lot of technical emotions in here, but is that what our users really want? Is that a simple learning curve? We can bring back something much easier as an interface. Like for that airplane, select destination and fly me there. <laughs> and then you see where you're going, and for the techies, they can have a small overlay there. Same could be true for Joomla. Does that backend first impression give us positive emotions with that huge list here? I'm happy to say that this morning we had a very good UX meeting and that uh, this will be cured for Joomla 3.2. Probably that one was a bit more emotional but we can and friendlier, but we can make it much, much better than that. Same for Joomla.org site. Take a look at this great 3.1 release with fantastic tags, with all that feature list and the tags hidden here, um, and the technical picture here. I guess that in the past we did better, and we can do easily much better than we did in the past. So, the conclusion to that lightning talk is that we need to think why people choose Joomla. But we don't only need to think why they choose Joomla, but we need to feel why they do choose Joomla, and we need to feel why they don't choose Joomla. And we need to make newbies and experienced people make feel Joomla and not only think about it. And I think that's something that most of us are afraid to express our emotion because we get bashed in the forum, in the groups, and people often confuse emotions with reasons of emotions. And we need to clarify the two. And one thing that I would like you to take away from here is, you, uh, like the fam famous American movies, you have the right to say whatever you want, but you might, uh, how do you say that? <laughs> but you might, uh, everything that we say might be taken against you, you know? <laughs> We need to s say you are allowed to give your emotions and to you are encouraged to give your emotions and everything you say can only be taken for you. I think that's an important lesson that I learned over the last few months in a training I had about emotions management and I would like to bring uh, here over to you. And um, that's probably the most important sentence that I had from there. So thank you for listening. What? Nothing. Is it on? Yes. Hi there. Um, what? Nothing is one of my extensions, and I get a lot of questions still about what it actually does. And that may be a stupid question, but there's actually more to it than, uh, than most think. So um, I want to take this opportunity of about 10 minutes to go a bit deeper into what the extension actually does. And uh, yeah. It's, well, you laugh, but there's more to it than that. So, let's begin with what?
Thank you. And the presentation should be online shortly.